Hey guys, Kevin here. So uh, listen to this clip from CNN, and we'll talk about it afterwards. Would let me, Steve Bannon, would let me, right, if you let me ask no, this question. No, because you have you get 24 hours of negative anti Trump hysterical coverage on this network okay. that led in recent weeks to some spectacularly think, embarrassing false reporting. I think the from viewers right now can ascertain no, who's the being hysterical. viewers are entitled my, to have my, three months of the truth. Why don't you just give me three minutes to tell you the truth about Donald Trump that I know? And then all of our campaigns. Because staff it's know, my show and, and I don't want to do that. So the, well, this here's, my, this here's my question. No, but this, isn't, this isn't a Steven, courtroom and I Steven, have a right to settle speak. down. Settle okay. down. Calm Look, down. Jake. I have a question for you about issues. Steve. So, guys, this just shows you how absolutely corrupt, how absolutely anti journalistic networks like CNN have become. Here you have a man who is gracious enough to go on Jake Tapper's show and he's been emasculated and treated like a child by Jake Tapper because he's saying things that Jake Tapper doesn't want people to hear on the air. And when Stephen Miller says 95% of reporting on Trump in the mainstream media is biased and, and negative, he's absolutely correct. That's a proven statistic. And this kind of clip here just shows you how bad it is. When Stephen Miller tries to expose all the lies and corruption at CNN, when he talks about how CNN has been lying for years now and how they've made up all this stuff about Russia, and he talks about all the retraction CNN has made over the past few months. Jake Tapper says, no, you're not going to say that. This is my show. And he doesn't even try to try to deny it. He just says, no, this is my show. You can't speak anymore. And that's what the left has become, right? There's no room for opposing ideas anymore. When I was a kid, there were shows on CNN that actually were good. You had shows like Crossfire, where you had guests on from the right and the left. You had people like William F. Buckley or Pat Buchanan on there, and they would have debates with people on the left. And sometimes the right would win, sometimes the left would win. But what always won was the best idea. I mean, first of all, today that would never happen. CNN would never let anybody who's a right-wing intellectual onto their network. They pick on people like Stephen Miller because they know that they're easy to control. But you would never get uh, a person like a Walter Block, much less somebody like even a Stefan Molyneux or a uh, Ben Shapiro, because these people would wipe the floor with these bleached hair idiots like Jake Tapper. Anyway, it gets worse. In a letter that was made public. I want to ask you, because um, you, you obviously are very offended by the notion that this book, Fire and Fury, paints a picture of President Trump. Trump is not mentally up to the job. Um, on Saturday, President Trump put out a series of tweets trying to defend himself f on this issue of fitness. And he said, quote, actually throughout my life, my two greatest assets have been mental stability and being like really smart. Crooked Hillary Clinton also played these cards very hard and as everyone knows, went down in flames. I went from very successful businessman to top TV star to president of the United States on my first try. I think that would qualify as not smart, but genius and a very stable genius at that. Do you think tweets like that help or hurt the cause that the president is stable and up for the job? Not only do I think... There was a lot of media fallout about that first clip I showed you. But I want to show you the second clip, too. It's from the same interview, and it's very telling. Because as that interview starts, you see Jake Tapper trying to push the Russia probe narrative. And Stephen Miller easily shuts it down. And that really mirrors what's happened in 2017. With 2017, you saw them come out strong, trying to push this narrative about collusion with Russia, and more and more stuff got exposed. And as Stephen Miller says there, he says, look, Jake, your network's been caught lying about this. Your own host called it a nothing burger. Peter Stroke was exposed, and all these other people were exposed being left-wing operatives. You've had all these stories you put out that were fake news, and you had to retract later. And so... Jake Tapper, he loses the argument there. He loses the debate. He, he's exposed as a fraud. And he pivots to this mental health narrative. And that's what's going on right now in 2018. The left is doing this last-minute Hail Mary to try to say that Trump is mentally ill because they've lost with the Russia narrative. So now they're going to say Trump's mentally ill. They're going to push this narrative with this new book. And it's going to be all over the media. They're going to all say, look, Trump is not mentally ill capable. He doesn't have all the faculties to run the country like he should. And it's completely untrue. And Stephen Miller shuts that down pretty quickly, too. He says, look, Trump, you know, he was a reality host. He was a business owner for a very, very uh, high-end business. And he did very good things with both of those careers. And now he's the president. And he's exactly right. You know, there you have to have very good mental faculties just to run a business, much less, 
you know, do all the other things Trump has been able to do. And the fact is, is that nobody questions Trump's mental health back then. Nobody questions Trump's mental health when he was on the uh, TV show. It's right now because he's president and because they couldn't win with the Russia thing that they're questioning his mental health. And I challenge anybody out there in the media, in academia, to find one diagnosis that they can find out of the DSMV, which is the Diagnostic Manual for Psychiatry, that would prove Trump to be ineffective as president. I guarantee you they cannot. They might be able to find one mental health diagnosis, and that is psychopathy. But being a psychopath is not inherently bad. Being a psychopath is an attribute that most Fortune 500 people uh, have. It's something that most of the presidents in our history have been allegedly diagnosed with, or, or people have said, you know, probably were psychopaths. So if he is a psychopath, all it means is he's less likely to empathize with people, that he's better at making snap decisions and, you know, balancing out rational arguments without having emotions involved. That's something that would be good for our country. And it has been, apparently, because if Trump is a psychopath, it's showing exactly the benefits of being a psychopath and running a country. We've had record low unemployment. We have everything is doing better under Trump than it was under Obama. So, you know what? Trump's a psychopath. Great. You know, <laughs> take the Zoloft and uh, Xanax you were going to give him and send it my way because this stuff's stressing me out.